It's time for the Jim and Terry Show. This is the Jim and Terry Show, minus Jim for another podcast. Wishing him well on his vacation, his holiday vacay, and hoping he comes back a little tanned, maybe a little darker, a little weathered. Test It to Destruction speaks of all kinds of things, music by Wigmore Allen Gibbons. I'd like to apply it in certain contexts, and let's start with the notion of climate change. And whether there is two oppose, whether there are two opposing views, or whether there is the possibility of denying that climate change is real. And to get at this, I sort of look at it as a test it to destruction, but it's a one-way testing. There is no recovery from this. The climate science has been clear for 50, 60 years, probably even more than that. And the CO2 levels in the atmosphere are the canary in the coal mine for global warming. And what that means in terms of erratic weather conditions, things that we haven't seen on scales that we haven't seen. And that includes um, earthquakes, it includes famines, it includes hot temperatures, cold temperatures, weather storms, rain of unmeasurable... Uh, quantities, snow of unprecedented levels, all of these things, the variations, yes, they all fit within some kind of degree of normalcy if you measure normal in the spans of thousands of years. The trouble is, within our short presence in the Industrial Revolution forward, in those few hundred years we have seen CO2 levels rise in a precipitously algorithmic fashion exponential rises in CO2. Never before seen in levels, even measured in glacial ice, that can be dated to tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of years. So this is unprecedented and it needs to be checked out and a game plan developed. We did have game plans. They were called the Intergovernmental Panels on Climate Change, IPCC, and we had agreements, 1.5 degrees warming is all that we would accept beyond which there was a tipping point described by scientists and we've looked at all kinds of ways of carbon capture of reducing consumption of fossil fuels which is responsible for the co2 levels going through the roof 
and we are talking about a collusion between people who extract and manufacture petroleum-based products and scientists who knew the dangers and sounded the alarm, and I'm thinking of a recent report that has been written about the Exxon collusion. Collusion means uh, you're working together for an, a, a policy outcome. You're keeping the money tap flowing in support of politicians who agree with your position, who will not clamp down through EPA regulations, environmental protection regulations, who will allow oil extraction to be expanded, who will allow fracking to be expanded, who will allow a good clean coal, said Donald Trump. And all of that continued right under our noses while some scientists were bought and paid for, some politicians were bought and paid for by the Oil and Gas Manufacturers Association, the Oil and uh, Gas producing nations under the influence of money being handed to politicians to prevent policy regulation and to promote deregulation. Remember, Trump was famous for saying for every legislation he passes in his administration, he would take out five or ten old led rules, old laws that regulated. And he stripped the EPA of much of their teeth, much of their bite. Some would argue in industry that that's a good thing because regulation of any sort is interference in the ability of business people to make money, interference in the capitalist process. While those of us who lean on the side of science and a policy that's social policy, lifting up the weak, the marginalized, we would say that deregulating, especially environmental issues, or even deregulating voting, as in removing uh, voting boxes from certain precincts during an election, this stuff is unconscionable and unethical. And in the terms of oil and gas industry, science, especially Exxon, knew the repercussions of CO2 in the atmosphere. Knowing, says G.I. Joe, is half the battle. The other half is doing something about it. In the case of climate, the deniers have buried all the evidence. Maybe they've burned it. Maybe it's up in smoke with the CO2 levels. What we do know is that we are seeing unprecedented weather calamities, whether it's floods, mudslides, avalanches, forest fires, uh, droughts, uh, water reservoirs being depleted, sod becoming worthless dirt as opposed to soil. All of this stuff is happening right in front of us, and yet we have how many? I'm not sure it's a third, maybe, uh, maybe a third to a a quarter to a third of the population still believes this is unreal, that this is a myth. And most of these people are coming from the right side of things, where you support ideologically reduced government involvement, reduced legislation, reduced intrusion, reduced, well, and reduced control, so that people are free to live their lives, free to exploit, free to pollute. And I'm saying, hold on a minute there. Test it to destruction. In terms of climate change, there is no reversing once we pass the tipping point, apparently. Is it 1.5 degrees? Is it 2 degrees? This is unknown territory for a lot of science. Can we clean up our act in time? And is that time one generation, two generations? We have goals for 2030, goals for 2050. Is that the time frame we're talking about? I'm not anticipating being around to see some of that stuff, so I want to be part of the process to unwind the clock. It's like winding back the doomsday clock, which, by the way, I was right, did go down from 100 to 90 seconds to midnight. That's not good, but climate change is part of that factor when they decide on how much to move things, and it's not looking good. So there you go. Test it to destruction. I hope not. I hope we don't test it to destruction. I hope we test it and prove it and roll it back in terms of temperatures, 
global warming, uh, CO2 emissions, in terms of other pollutants in the atmosphere. Roll it back. Take us back, way back, to the days of fresh water, clean air. And don't trust politicians to get it done. Be involved yourself. A message from The Jim and Terry Show. Signing off for now. Bye-bye for now.